Are you feeling overwhelmed in setting up your new music studio? What do you need? Now, I'm not talking about shaker eggs and rhythm sticks and drums and scarves. None of that stuff. I'm talking about furniture. What do you need in your studio? Well, I'm going to give you my tips to create an inspiring and well-equipped learning environment for all of your little musicians. If you are a new teacher, or maybe you're just looking at investing some money into your music studio to make it extra special, to make it stand out amongst all the other music studios in your area, I have made this video for you. Hey, I'm Miss Deb, baby, toddler, preschool music specialist, author, and children's songwriter. Before COVID, this was my studio. I taught over 125 kidlets and their caregivers and two preschools and 23 piano students. I had no other teachers teaching for me. This was my space. I made it my own and I put so much thought into every little thing that I put in there. If you find any of the info that I share with you today helpful, please click that subscribe button so I can create more videos just like this. We're going to start from the floor up. Yeah, I said floor. <laughs> if you're teaching toddlers and preschoolers, you're gonna be spending a lot of time on the floor, getting up, getting down, rolling around, jumping, oh, who knows? <laughs> you are gonna want a floor that is forgiving. You want one of those, I don't know, rubber floors that are about an inch thick with like 2.5 feet wide, planks right with the little puzzle pieces to fit it together we want the two feet foot two foot planks so that all the little edges don't come up so easily okay you want them to be kind of hidden because sometimes kids like to pick at things surprise surprise yes it does happen <laughs> go for a foam floor a rubber floor reason these little kids are just learning to walk, they're learning to run, they are falling down everywhere. You know, you might even fall down a few times too. So you wanna be able to land softly on the ground. Sometimes grandma and grandpas come. They wanna be able to sit down comfortably on the floor and get back up again. A rubber floor, my number one choice. Chairs, you are gonna need quite a few chairs. Depending on how big your space is, you wanna be able to fit a bunch of grandmas and grandpas, and who knows, maybe you'll even have concerts there. If you have chairs for grandmas and grandpas to come and sit, they're gonna to wanna to come and watch their littles, which is gonna create this wonderful community in your music school. All the families will get to know each other and love each other, and we'll all grow up together, and we will be a part of this family for a long, Long time you want those families to keep coming back so you need those chairs you don't just need the chairs for the grandmas and grandpas sometimes you need them for the mamas or the daddies right because they're sitting down maybe they brought a baby they have a toddler in the class and they also have a baby well baby's hungry a lot so mamas will often be breastfeeding in those chairs so you got to make sure you make it easy for them to come and to participate chairs must have Okay, since we're talking about sitting down, let's talk about the potty. <laughs> Toddlers, well, a lot of them are potty training. You need a potty seat. How are they gonna practice going to the potty if you only have a big hole for them to sit in and fall through? Get that potty seat, put it in the bathroom so it's always there. Then little Joey can run to the bathroom and go to the potty all by himself, just like he would at home. Your parents have no excuses to not register for that next set of lessons because they're potty training, right? This is a really good thing to have a potty seat. Those families can keep coming and know that they can continue potty training even when they're at your music class. Potty seats need stepping stools, okay? <laughs> Gotta get that stepping stool in there. You don't want little Joey to fall plop into the toilet because he had no way to get in on top of the potty seat. Get that stepping stool there. Okay, so mama's got to go to the bathroom. The toddler's in the class and she's got a baby. Oh no, what is she gonna do? Well, she could pass the baby off to you and maybe that might be a wonderful thing or maybe you might be really busy multitasking a class or in between classes you're trying to get ready for the next class to start and you're getting all these 
you can't look after a baby then. Get a bumbo seat or a bouncy seat so that mama can take the baby to the bathroom, plop them in the seat, she can go pee. Mama's happy, mama will keep coming. <laughs> Potty seat, bumbo seat, stepping stool, bathroom must haves. Change table, pee you, somebody is smelly. You don't want them to be smelly for very long. Once they know they're smelly, they need to change. You don't want them changing on your beautiful rubber floor, no way. <laughs> they go to the change table. They know exactly where it is because they've walked past it many times, right? And so they go, they change their bum, everybody's happy. They get the privacy they need and so does the little one who's getting their bum changed. Nobody wants to be changed in front of a bunch of strangers. Nobody wants to change their baby in front of a bunch of strangers. Get that change table and it will give you success. Round, round and round and round. <laughs> a huge round blanket, that's what you need. Hey, circle time is so important for toddlers and preschoolers because we want them to watch us. Watch us as the teachers modeling all the behavior and all of the actions in the song, right? If you're not sitting in a circle, you're kind of just scattered throughout the room and you don't have that eye contact. So that's why circle time is so important. Now, if you tell a toddler to sit in a circle, what are they gonna do? Nothing, because they don't know what a circle is. <laughs> if you have a big, huge, round blanket out, they, can figure it out. Parents can figure it out too. Oh, there's a round blanket. I guess I probably have to sit around the edge, right? Or even you just tell them, oh, let's sit around the blanket. Let's sit around in a circle. And this, you have circle time. Usually you wouldn't think it's a big deal, but some, some people, it really is a big deal. They need all the help that they can get. So circle blankets are awesome. They're hard to find. Maybe you know someone who's really good at sewing. I'd give you my mom's number, but I don't think she's taking any orders right now. <laughs> an area for shoes and coats. Okay, little Joey is walking into your music class and he's so excited, he can't wait to get started. So he runs inside with his shoes and his jacket and plops down the floor. Oh no, his shoes were muddy, ugh. Now we have to clean. Oh my goodness, you don't need that. Have a designated area for shoes and four jackets, right? Little Joey comes into class all calm. He knows exactly where to take his shoes off. He knows where to put his jacket and you're teaching him responsibility. When he's done, he walks over to the circle blanket and he is ready to begin learning. An area for strollers. Okay, this is like so important because somebody's walking by your music studio and they see you have a class or something going on but it looks so chaotic. Kids are running and screaming everywhere and there's shoes and there's jackets and there's strollers. I can't even see through the window because there's so much stuff in the way, right? Make a sign stroller parking <laughs> and all the mommies will park their strollers over there everything is tidy and neat and away and your people walking past oh look oh, wow what's going on in here they see all the strollers line they see everybody sitting in the circle or standing or dancing having fun and it looks organized well guess what they're gonna look forward to walking past and seeing you guys all the time so stroller area must have Kids table and chair sets. Yes, you need these. Kids love to sit at the little mini table and chairs. It makes them feel so grown up, like they're ready for school. So now this isn't just good about, you know, knowing that you're ready for school, because that is really, really a cool thing. But what's even awesomer is you can, awesomer, awesomer, is that even a word? I don't know. <laughs> you know what's even better? <laughs> is that classes, the quality content that you can teach with tables and chairs, where well, you could have like a little music theory type class, you could have like a story time where you do arts and crafts, you could do coloring, you could do drawing, there's just so many options. 
Plus, you could even do birthday parties. If you have tables and chairs, there are so many options for you to be able to make more money, get more people in the door. I started off, I had three tables with five chairs each and I realized five was too crammed because sometimes the parents wanted to sing, not sing, sometimes they wanted to sit. And so then I ended up getting two more tables and a bunch of more chairs and then that way, we could all sit i think i had space for 20. that's a lot of kids all in one class fill up your classes it's more fun lots of kids get those tables and chairs and you'll get more registrations display 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 <laughs> you need brochures business cards displayed outside and inside your studio. You want to capture the people who are walking by, looking through the window, seeing all this fun stuff that's going on. Oh, look, there's a brochure. I'm going to grab one. And they're reading and they're reading and they're listening and they're watching. Oh, this looks like so much fun. Oh, Jenny would love this. They put the brochure back in their pocket. It's awesome. They tell their friends. Inside the studio, you want to have some of those as well because they're in there for their free class. Oh my goodness, my friends are gonna love this. They grab some brochures, share them with your friends. You want people to enroll in your classes and bring their friends because automatically you have more commitment. If their friends are coming, they're more likely to come and they'll tell their friends. And soon before you know it, your registration is just gonna go out of control because you are the coolest place to visit. Join our group on Facebook. It's free preschool music and piano resources. And hey, it's a free group. We post free stuff in it all the time. And on Mondays, we even have a spot for small creators to post items for sale. So if you're a creator or if you are just looking for more preschool music resources, join that free group. It's awesome. If you liked today's video and you want more tips for teachers, hit that subscribe button so I know you're watching. And Next week, I'm going to do a special video that's been requested a few times on self-publishing for music teachers. So if that sparks your interest, make sure you check in on Thursday, and I will see you next week. Bye!